triangle or pyramid on paper, they will then leave out the word scheme and go, see, everything is a pyramid. Your job is a pyramid. Your family's a pyramid. There's your grandma, your grandpa, your mom, your dad, you, your brother, your sister, your kids. Isn't that multi-level? So they focus on the shape of the structure and not the things that make it a pyramid scheme. Specifically, the pay-to-play mandate, the endless chain recruiting model, the recruiting mandate to reach the next level, and the extreme money transfer from the bottom 99% of participants to the 1% at the top. The United States government is structure just like a triangle. The president did not become the president because he recruited three vice presidents and so on. Gary's analogy is complete nonsense. Then he says that the people at the bottom of a corporate structure will never reach the top. This is just simply untrue. You absolutely can work your way up through a company to get a better position. It's called a promotion and they're fundamental elements of business. If everyone stayed at the same position in a company forever, what would happen when all the senior members retired? There has to be people at lower levels who move up and take their place and new people to fill in the space for those who have moved up. And you know who would understand this concept, Gary? Anyone who's actually worked a job. 50% of our marriages end in divorce. Those are real numbers. But I'm not yeah. going to go to somebody's wedding this Saturday and go... Um, can I say something real quick? <laughs> Do you know you have a 50% chance of this working? Here Gary talks about 50% of marriages failing as his way of responding to the fact that 99% of annual participants in MLMs lose money. Never mind that a 50% failure rate is nowhere near a 99% failure rate, but married couples are not getting divorced because they failed to recruit three other married couples and so on. I've heard so many of these deflections from people who have been brainwashed by MLMs. They'll say, you know what the real scam is? college. Student loans are so high, the business professor doesn't even own a business, etc. But pointing out the shortcomings of other things doesn't wash away your own. Imagine you were standing before a judge in court, accused of stealing a car, and instead of pleading your case, you just went, well, your honor, that guy stole a bike. America's in a crisis. The world is in a crisis. People are losing hope. Because see, folks, after slavery came jobs. Job is another form of slavery. Why? Because you work for someone, they get all the wealth, and they give you what? The crumbs. The Bible says the borrower is a slave to the lender. Isn't that amazing that one of your credit cards is called MasterCard? And to every master is a slave. I can't tell you how uncomfortable it makes me to have to point out to Gary, a black man who is old enough to be my father, that jobs and slavery are not the same thing. In that clip, which is from 2009, Gary uses the economic factors of the world at the time to explain why now is the time to join Primerica. He does the exact same thing in this clip from 2020. The world needs us today, more so than ever. People are scared fearful, going into depression, and we have to be the neighborhood hope dealer. What Gary is doing here is called thought stopping. He's getting you to operate on emotion instead of thinking critically. If you were at a vulnerable time in your life and then you came across someone like Gary, a well-dressed, charismatic person who claims to be an entrepreneur who makes a fortune and helps others to do the same, you might be convinced. Add to that the fact that you were likely introduced to this person by a close friend or family member that you already know and trust. Add to that the fact that you're most likely influenced by the peer pressure or mob psychology that comes along with being presented the opportunity in a room full of people who are clapping and cheering and laughing in support of the person at the front of the room, in this case, Gary. In the next clip, you're going to see Gary do exactly that to hundreds of young black people at last year's African American Leadership Council event from Primerica. What I didn't tell you yet is that Primerica has an African American, Hispanic American, and Asian Pacific Islander Leadership Council. In my opinion, these councils and their events are used to target these ethnic groups specifically for recruitment because these are unfortunately among the demographic graphics that have the largest, most closely knit families and communities that can be exploited by an MLM company's endless chain. I'm going to show you how to get wealthy. And I know for a fact that if you follow these principles, you can walk out of the day, literally, right, and say, guess what, mama? Guess what, wife? Guess what, husband? Guess what, kids? Guess what, dad? We're going to be rich. It's a mindset. I'm going to win here. I'm going to win here. I'm going to win. I'm going to win. If I don't win, it's because I don't want to win. This is the preemptive victim blaming that every MLM I've ever looked at uses to get you to believe that if you fail, it's your fault. Just look at me. I'm successful, so obviously the system works. Maybe you just didn't work. I trained my son to be an entrepreneur. He'll not work in his house every day in his life. Just as a sin in my household to have a job. Spoken like a true spoiled rich kid, every MLM I've ever studied looks at jobs as the worst possible thing that could happen to someone. They have these little acronyms designed to make themselves look like they're above the slavery of having a J-O-B, journey of the broke, just over broke, etc. This type of behavior is dehumanizing and wrong. It's also ironic because even those pesky little jobs that pay the least would still earn you more than you would likely make in an MLM. Speaking of Gary's son, let's look at how Gary Cornegay Jr., aka G2, has blossomed under Gary Sr.'s leadership. 
leadership. The person that's been BSing you, saying they want to talk about it later, they want to think about it, I don't know. This is where you pull the trigger. This is where you poke your chest out. This is where you start talking that way. You start saying, hey, listen, I'm three clients away from a promotion. Somebody in your house is buying a policy tonight. And this fool let me write his wife up. I do this all the time, by the way. See, I'm stupid enough to believe what's being said from the stage. Do me a favor, take your ID out. Let's go ahead and start this application. How much will it be today? It, it's only 124. You got that, I know you got that. Come on, let's go ahead. Well, I don't I don't have it, perfect. Who can we call to get it? Because you can't pass up on this once in a lifetime opportunity. Well, I can join under you next week. I'm gonna be honest with you. I might be wealthy as all outdoors next week and don't wanna work with you. Now let's look at another one of Gary's recruits, Vivian, and see what her Primerica recruiting presentation looks like. 90% of, of winning in Primerica has everything to do with your mindset. Mentorship is so big, you guys. And so attending these Zoom meetings are very is very important to building your business. And I'm going to be honest with you, you will not make it in this business if you miss meetings. Having control over your time is a fundamental priority of cults. They need you to be constantly inundated with noise, whether that's Zoom meetings, in-person meetings, engaging in post on social media, Telegram group chats, events, etc. And mind you, this is unpaid time that you're spending on Primerica that isn't actually centered around selling anything or making money. And Vivian is saying that if you miss these meetings, you won't make it in Primerica. On this slide in Vivian's presentation, it says, the only way to build long-term passive income is through having a system where recruiting never stops. Passive income means you do the work once and you get paid forever. So how can this be passive income if recruiting never stops? Gary is a prime example of this. He's dedicating hours of his time every week to these Zoom calls, which means it's not passive income. And everybody recruits, okay? The military stays recruiting. The NFL, NBA, right? They stay recruiting. Colleges stay recruiting. So if you want to stay in business long enough, you know that you got to keep recruiting, right? Again, with the false equivalencies. NBA teams do not win championships by having the biggest downline of players. Nonsense, nonsense, and more nonsense. Everyone wants to make money, okay? So who do you know that's, that maybe is a stay-at-home parent? Who do you know that maybe just got laid off, right? Start thinking of people, and um, you're going to set up recruiting appointments with them. Who do you know that's struggling? Who do you know that already trusts you? They'd be perfect for Primerica. I've never heard anyone in any of these meetings say, who do you know that's already great with finance and is making good money. Because of course not. Those people are doing just fine working their horrible J-O-Bs. Remember how Gary said that all those other MLM companies that are pyramid schemes, in his opinion, tie the product to recruiting? Well, in the next segment, Vivian explains how to do exactly that, even showing how it's incentivized with a $500 bonus for those who sign up new recruits and sell those new recruits a policy. It also proves that Gary saying, we don't pay bonuses, is a flat out lie. In order for you to get promoted to what's called a district leader, we're going to recruit six business partners for you. Let's say all six of your people get their own life insurance and the average sell is $84. That's 6,000 in volume that is done within your team and you haven't even done any training yet. So you actually earn $200 for every training sale that we close over 1,000 in yearly volume and we bring a, a recruit attached to that. Primerica has this awesome incentive going on right now, but for recruiting one business partner and doing three insurance sales, they're going to throw another $500. Now you have your six by six. I wasn't even making this at my job after taxes. So to get this on a bonus and all you got to do is put me in front of people. Literally, that's how simple this is. Okay. So simple. Here's my question. If you remove the part where you sell insurance to each of your recruits, how successful would Primerica really be? Same goes for every MLM. Would they see any sales of their products if the people recruited to the company weren't also encouraged or mandated to buy them as well? Also, this six by six that Vivian mentioned seems very unassuming. But if you actually play that out, a process of six people who recruit six people who recruit six people could only be repeated 12 cycles before your downline exceeded the entire population of the earth. And because because the bottom of the pyramid is always expanding with each new layer, the majority of all recruits will always be in the bottom layer. This means that it will always be mathematically impossible for the majority of people in the company to move up even one level. Also, if the people in my downline cancel their policy or one of their customers cancels their policy, it triggers what's called a chargeback, meaning that advanced commission you got when you made the sale has to be paid back to the policy issuer. And that means that everyone above you in the chain gets a chargeback on their piece of the pie as well. The only way to guarantee that a person leaving the company doesn't have this detrimental effect on me is to keep recruiting. This proven system is in a constant state of collapse and the only solution is for recruitment to outpace quitting. Now you have six people to work with, six people that are not licensed, Reggie, 
six people that need to to need need to get trained and promoted just like you. So guess what, Reggie? If you had to book eight to ten appointments, what do you think your six people have to do? This is a huge red flag. New recruits are being encouraged to prospect their friends and family on behalf of their upline before they themselves are even licensed. But why would you give your sales away to your upline instead of waiting until you got your license and making the sales yourself? Surely the commission you would make from those sales is more than this field training bonus would be, right? The field training bonus actually only benefits your upline. If only five of your new recruits made a purchase, then you wouldn't be eligible for the bonus because you need six recruits to buy a policy to get the bonus. But your upline would still get paid off the five people that you did bring in. It's like a scam within the scam. So let's say on the average, each person books at least six appointments, 36 appointments, and let's say the average sell is a thousand, that's 36,000. If you're at a 50% contract that I got you at, 50% of 36,000 is 18,000 that you make your first month license. In a business model where most people will lose money, how do you say something like this with a straight face? Vivian finishes off her presentation with this list template for you to fill in, as well as a script for what to say on the phone to your potential recruits. In this script, it says to tell your recruit that in order to qualify to get licensed, you need to observe eight to 10 field training observations. This is simply a lie. Anyone can go get their insurance license from the government. You don't need Primerica. And even if you were in Primerica, you still wouldn't be required to do these field training appointments to get your license. I found this video on Gary's YouTube channel, which is about Vivian and her pursuit of the Primerica dream. And this video absolutely broke my heart. And I felt I was stuck. I had dropped out of college and I felt like, okay, I need to find a career. I need to find something stable. My childhood friend, they said, I want to introduce you to somebody. Everyone was trying to talk me out of you know, don't do that, you're wasting your time. And I realized no one around me was successful. And I remember like crying and like yelling, like you guys just don't wanna see me do good, you don't understand. My best friend from high school said almost exactly the same thing to me when I tried to express my concern about the MLM he was in. He was brainwashed. In the next part, Vivian talks about her mom getting sick with cancer and passing away shortly after. She says that during the time her mom was sick, she locked herself up in her home office and got to work trying to build her Primerica business instead of spending time with her family. Family because they would understand later. She felt that she was doing this for them. And then this is kind of where the business really did pay off because why do you build a business? That month I took off and my business kept working without me. Buying my dream car, materialistic stuff, the things that I lost that I gained back and then some. When I say I found my purpose, I found my purpose. This is so heartbreaking to me because I believe Vivian is a good person whose situation was taken advantage of. I also empathize with her regarding the passing of her mom because last year my grandma was suddenly diagnosed with stage four cancer and died a month later. When our loved ones pass away, the time we had with them is the only thing that matters, not money or anything else. Vivian explains that it was thanks to Primerica that she was able to take time off after her mom passed away, but I can't help but feel like the time she should have been taking off was when her mom was still alive. And then talking about buying her dream car and gaining back what she lost and then some. I just don't understand this. A car is just a car. The money can't bring her mom back. Vivian, if you're watching this, I want you to know I don't think you're a bad person. I don't think you're a scammer. You said at the end that you found your purpose. Vivian, I promise you, God did not take away your mom as some sign that you need to do Primerica. Gary has been in Primerica for 35 years. I can't even begin to imagine the number of Vivians that have been created as a result of his mentorship. I think if Gary Gary was such a good mentor and such a respectable businessman. He should have used some of his endless wealth to help you during your time of need so you could enjoy the little time you had left with your mom. After all, in Gary's own words, I could burn through a hundred grand. Let's break down this unlimited income potential, shall we? First, you join Primerica as an associate for $99. Then you get your state insurance license. Now you're at the representative level and you get a 25% commission of any life insurance policy that you sell, which is severely lower than the standard starting commission for most life insurance companies that don't use an MLM model. This makes me think, why would a company whose goal is to make sales put the obstacle in their own way of making people pay to work for them as well as having to recruit others when most insurance companies don't do this? With Primerica, you can unlock a higher commission by recruiting people under you who also pay to join the company. This harkens back to the mathematically impossible six by six we looked at earlier. Technically with Primerica, you could just sell the products and not recruit anyone, but the starting commission is so low that even if you were able to sell $4,000 worth of life insurance in your first month as a brand new agent, your commission would only be a thousand dollars. And the expectation I've been given so far during this meeting is making hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars. But with this model where advancement is based on recruiting, you could rise through the ranks of Primerica and make money without ever trying to sell to customers. Instead, just recruiting 
more people and selling a policy to them when they join. And from what we've seen, this is exactly what recruits are encouraged to do. I found 20 of these fast start guides, which were created by the leaders of different teams or base shops in Primerica. Technically, these aren't official Primerica documents, and I'm sure Primerica would deny that they approve of these fast start guides being used to train new recruits. But in my opinion, these are an accurate representation of how Primerica's recruiters are actually operating out in the field. In one of the fast start guides from the TMM base shop, which stands for Turner Millionaire Movement, the first page talks about how you could be making between $1,000 and $3,000 per month within 60 days and emphasizes the importance of not letting negative people destroy your positive attitude and desire to win. On page two, it says, commit to the four point game plan. And step one is everyone is focused on recruiting. At the end, it includes this image, which is literally a pyramid recruiting model. The rest of the document includes spaces to write down your goals, a list of friends and family you can call up and pitch Primerica to, and a template of a script telling you what you should and shouldn't say when recruiting someone to Primerica, similar to what we saw at the end of Vivian's presentation. The other 19 fast start manuals from different base shops are all almost identical to this one. Ultimately, I think disguising your MLM as a financial services company is a really clever way of running an MLM because you do have to get licensed to sell financial services and products. So saying that you're a financial advisor appears a lot more legit on the surface than just selling shampoo or protein shakes like some other MLMs. Nonetheless, it's still just an elaborate disguise to hide the true money maker in the company, recruitment. And when recruitment is touted as the real way to make money, this should be a huge red flag that you're looking at a pyramid scheme. According to Primerica's annual report for 2021, there were 349,374 new recruits. And around 39,000, or roughly one-tenth of them, even made it to the point of getting licensed, which means that only around one-tenth of all new recruits who joined Primerica were even eligible to earn money from the compensation plan at all. And at the end of the year, they had roughly the same amount of licensed sales reps as they did at the beginning of the year. But how? Didn't they bring on almost...